Alright, I'm here for day two of my Castlevania fan game development. So I'm just going to quickly go over everything that happened since day one. So I expanded the background a bit. I imported some more mountains, gave them some color. Also threw in the sky gradient, as you'd see in Simon's Quest. So I just pretty much overlaid everything to just add more to the background. I'm probably not going to leave like both types of mountains in the final product. I'm just leaving these here for the sake of saying, hey, I know how to like put in two different types of mountains. So as you can see, there's the sky gradient right here, the new mountains. And again, I use the trick where I'm overlaying the colors. So I separated everything by one color and then just overlaid them on top of each other and that's how it happened. Also, I have the whip animation in, and I have the whip and I have enemies that I can interact with. The blue skeletons should be moving. I mean, they moved in the original Castlevania games. I still need to do that. However, we do have the skeletons here, and I can interact with them as such. I still might want to work on the physics a bit when it comes to jumping and whipping at the same time. Sometimes it can feel a little funny. They don't walk. They're animated, though, but once I figure out how to set their speed and just make them move, and then make them turn around when they either hit a wall or, like, stop at a ledge, like so, then we'll be all set. Then we'll have enemies that actually move. I mean, these are the simplest enemies in the game. Also, they take one hit to kill. And also, I figured out how to make them do damage when you walk into them. I'm probably not going to have the knockback, because that pisses a lot of people off. But yes, the player gets hurt. And they also have some sort of post-hit invincibility. Except I have not put in the effect that makes Trevor just blink. To indicate that he still has post-hit invincibility. Because you don't just take damage like every second you're in front of an enemy. You get hurt, you blink for a few seconds, because you're pretty much invulnerable to all damage. And then that wears off in like 1-2 seconds. And then... Yeah, it's called post invincibility. Most games have that. And this one has it too. It's just I don't have the effect that makes Trevor blink. So you actually see that you have post invincibility after you just take taken damage. So let's just drop our health to zero over here. We do not yet have a death animation. For now, we just have the character disappear off the screen. He should just like go into a dead state. And then we just have to reload the level and put him back where he's in the last room he was in. Take off a life, so on and so forth. I have not gotten that far yet. I mean, he's technically dead. Well, more like gone than dead, because like, he just completely disappeared from the hierarchy here. He is just gone from existence. He's been destroyed. Quite literally speaking, he has been destroyed. So I pretty much figured out everything I wanted to figure out in terms of handling collision. So I don't want Trevor to actually be able to push the enemies around because of the box collider around him. He doesn't do that. I mean, he can still actually interact with them, and if he like touches one without actually whipping it or so, he gets hurt. Obviously, this is what should happen. Chomping on it, same thing. And of course, his whip can detect the skeleton, and if it does, just kills it. I am actually going to put in, like health amounts for each of the enemies because not every enemy is supposed to die in one hit. When the whip hits, it will actually decrement a certain amount of health based on like how strong your whip is or your sub weapon and then if that enemy's health reaches zero, it just dies. And you're not going to see each enemy's individual health, but you could probably just measure it in how many hits it's going to take with each weapon. For example, blue skeletons die in one hit from a whip. That's what it should be. They'll probably just die in one hit from anything actually. So there's really not much else to say because I don't have any level. Also, I still don't have any level. I'm still trying to implement the bare basics. We have one enemy. He doesn't even walk yet. But Trevor can interact with him, kill it, get killed by it, and everything. So we're off to a pretty good start for day two. I'm also planning to put in gold skeletons, which are probably going to be the same as the blue ones, but they just take an extra hit. And the red ones... Well, they're supposed to just crumble into a pile of bones and then get up after a few seconds and you'll have to knock them out again or just run away from them, jump over them, do whatever. Like, these things should stand up once you knock them out, but I'm not putting in the functionality for that yet. 
that's going to take a while. Also, I took the time to implement more blocks. And yes, just in case you're wondering, I can easily drag and drop these. Okay, so I'd ideally want to have it in the foreground. In the foreground object. This way I can easily just group everything based on where it belongs. So, yes. All my foreground objects are in this parent object. Nothing on it, just it's here to contain all of these. So I can easily just collapse it and not have to look at block one, block one, block one, block one, block one, block one, so on and so forth. You get the idea. And also I can just, as you can see, like each of these blocks has four color objects. I can collapse that. So can I easily just drag and drop these blocks at will? Because they're all in prefabs. And I also recently found something from the asset store that makes my blocks or pretty much all my objects that I want to have snap to a grid. Snap to a grid if I check this box. It says snap to grid script. This is something I found off the asset store. I did not do this myself. Yeah, this is going to make actual map making way easier because... It's just annoying to try and get everything lined up perfectly. And now this add-on pretty much does it for you. Everything's snapping to like 0 0.75. That's what these that's how big these blocks are. So like this bl block here is now right next to the one to the left. You will know for sure that there's exactly a 0 0.75 pixels space between these two blocks. And now like 1.5 pixels space. And of course, you can interact with them and everything. They're all solid blocks. They're exactly like the blocks you see already, just they look different. That's the only thing different from them. They look different. I mean, the controls still feel a little awkward at times. I would like to look at that some more. I mean, also want to get some more of the bare basics into the game, like more enemy types. Some of the simpler ones we'll start with. But yeah, you get the idea. Also, we still can duck. I have not put that in yet. And also, we'll have to be able to whip while ducking. Because I'm probably going to put in some low enemies that you can't hit with the high whip. Or, like, whip while standing up. Now let's just get rid of these because I don't need them. So yeah, this is pretty much all the blocks I should need for a while. There's probably going to be other foreground objects, but these are the blocks specifically. And this should be all I need for a while. Nothing added here in this folder. These are just colors changed. Not transparent yet, not using them. Well, I also added the UI functionality, which is the status bar you see. I mean, there was stuff in the status bar, but there wasn't actually any functionalities. Now you can actually take... Well, there was no point in actually trying to code in the functionality for taking damage if there was, like, no enemies to hurt yourself on. Well, now there's this thing. It should be walking, but it's not just yet. But it's still here for the sake of walking into to take damage. Knowing that we can actually kill something with our whip. So that's already, like, two huge steps in the right direction. And that's about it for day two. See ya.